Ground Solvers, Colfax Math here. This is a practical math channel. We do math with a purpose. A lot of my videos are all about taking union math exams or standardized math exams, how to take the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers entrance exam in mathematics. I've got a lot of comments and requests for kind of doing a course from the very beginning. So I see this being a course with a series of videos in it. Every video will be a chapter in Foundation of Math Skills. I think I'll title the whole playlist Foundations of Math, just because I'm a contractor, an arborist, and the best way to build a good house is to have a solid foundation. I know that metaphor is used a lot, but this is going to be the foundational math course so that all other math can progress off of this. You might have seen all this math before. Um, you might have forgotten pieces of it. You might want to just go back to the beginning and get everything solidified and have a solid foundation and move forward from that. What I would highly recommend you do is you have a notebook out. You subscribe to this channel and stay up on these videos. You watch the videos and take notes and then do the problems in the videos as well and make sure you're on the right track. Math isn't actually that hard. The problem with math is it is so cumulative based on the previous section that if you're missing pieces, it becomes impossible. So the intent of this Foundations of Math course is to fill in all of those missing pieces. So let's go ahead and get started. I'll talk more about the course. Uh, later in the video and maybe in future videos. We're going to start chapter one really with number operations and fractional measurement. I have it split into three outcomes, adding and subtracting numbers, using a number line, introducing the variable x, multiplication and division, and fractional measurement. So let's get started with outcome number one. So outcome number one is adding and subtracting numbers using a number line. Um, and I know you've seen this a long time, but it's really connected into a lot of pieces. The first thing is, this is a number line. It is usually labeled X. X is your independent variable. You pick that letter X because it's a least used letter in the alphabet. From using that letter X for your number line, um, you're going to introduce a vertical axis Y, and that's going to take points in space to create Cartesian coordinates in two-dimensional space. And then from there, you can actually create lines and shapes. And that's really the foundation of geometry, a place to create it. And then really from X and Y, you're going to include a third axis, Z. That's going to come straight out from the board. And you'll now be able to create solids in space. So it all starts on the basic number line of X. And we'll get started there. And then from there, like I said, it's the foundation. We'll build into the vertical axis and then the three-dimensional Z axis as well. So I actually have this number line pretty well in my head. I visualize it every time I add numbers. So if I have, you know, 1 plus 5, that's saying I start at 1, and I jump 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and I end right here at 6, right? If I have 2 minus 5, that means I start at 2, and I subtract 5, and I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 and I end at negative 3. So addition is right hand travel, subtraction is left hand travel. Okay, so you're remembering that plus is to the right, negative to the left. Let's have a problem negative 3 plus 5 that says this is where I start and then I add 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and that puts me right there at 2. Or let's say I got another one right here, negative 3 minus, that means I go to the left 3, 1, 2, 3, and I end at negative 6. If I have negative 4 plus a negative 2, that is saying I start at negative 4 and I travel to the left 2. And that's basically how addition and subtraction works on the number line. Just think positive moves you to the right, negative moves you to the left. And you really need to work with a lot of these numbers and do a lot of practice so it's super quick. Every future math thing is based on this idea of the number line and adding and subtracting numbers. All right, let's move on to outcome number two, multiplication and division. This multiplication table here, there's no way around it. You have to have this thing memorized. You can't really do any algebra. You can't solve any equations. You can't do any factoring until you actually have this memorized. Some of that new fancy, new math business has kind of gone away from that, but that is not the case. Every standardized test does not allow you to have a calculator, and you have to know this. So the best way to do it is just visit it a lot. I would print out this table. I would hold it with you. And I would just go through and make sure you have everything down. 
The way to remember it is one times anything is the same thing. Twos are easy enough because you just double a number. So you double a one, double a two, double a three, double a four. Threes aren't too bad either. You're just going to triple a number in your head. So two, four, six, three, six, nine, four, eight, twelve. If you could count by threes, uh, that helps a lot. And then fours aren't too bad either. So on a four, I double a number, 12, and then I double that number, 24. So six and four is 24. Fives, you should be able to count by fives, count all the way up. Backwards four is till you get it down. Let's say you get it down and you just don't have these. And when you're in the car, just listen to them. Four times six, 24. Four times seven, 28. Four times eight, 32. You just gotta keep working on them until they are memorized. And the best way to memorize anything it's through repetition. The other thing to note as well are the squares. So this diagonal down the square are the square numbers. One times one is one. Two times itself is four. Three squared is nine. Four times four, four squared is 16. Five squared, six squared, seven squared, eight squared, nine squared, 10 squared. So if you got that whole diagonal memorized, then it makes that block even smaller and smaller. So maybe you'll get that block all the way down to only seven and eight or a few different numbers and just keep practicing those. So that's multiplication and division is a reverse operation of multiplication. So let's take a look at that. So multiplication is just as number facts, three times seven is 21. But what you're really doing in division is reversing that 21 divided by three. You just need to know the multiplication table. What you're saying here, it's three times what is equal to 21? So you're really just moving the equal sign around. Lost my pen there. So what you really want to do is just get that multiplication table done and then make sure you could do these really quick. 56 divided by seven. You need to know that's eight because on that multiplication table, seven times eight is 56. I know this is from a while ago and if it's a little bit foggy, the future math that builds on all of that will not make sense until you really get that thing dialed down. So I would highly recommend you put in the time and really get that multiplication table dialed. Very rarely will you have a calculator that you can use. On a standardized test, you never will, but usually like quick decision-making is based on doing those multiplications pretty quickly in your head. Our last outcome, fractional measurement. Let's go over to that. All right, let's start out on a ruler or a tape measure. Let's say this is all in inches and from zero to one is one inch. I'm going to just keep cutting that in half to get my fractional measurements. Zero to one is one full inch. I cut it in half. That longest tick mark right there is going to be my half. I cut those in half. The way I cut a fraction in half is I double a bottom number. So I take that and I cut it in half to get one quarter. So now I have one quarter, two quarters, three quarters, four quarters. Then I'm going to cut those quarters in half. So I double a bottom number, one eighth. 2 eighths, 3 eighths, 4 eighths, 5 eighths. This is going to be the equivalent of 6 eighths, 7 eighths, over to 1, which is 8 eighths. So the longest line is going to be a half, the next longest a quarter, the next longest an eighth. Then I'm going to cut those in half as well to get 16 So the shortest line on a tape measure right here will be 1 16 2 16 3 16 4 16 5 16 Six sixteenths, seven sixteenths. It's going to be eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and back to sixteen sixteenths. So just to recap, you have to understand that number line that has arrows on both ends to say it's infinite. If you're adding, you're going to the right, subtracting to the left. You could add, subtract positive, negative numbers. Then you have to have your multiplication table memorized. And division is the reverse of that. So if you have multiplication, you could do your division. From there, you really get a fractional measurement on a ruler. And you always reduce these fractions. Um, I would call these out when you're driving. 1 16th, 1 8th, 3 16th, 1 quarter, 5 16th, and so on. Until you're really good at fractional measurement. All of the future math, all of the math, on that standardized math test to get into the union has this as its foundation. So this is the first video. 
I'll put some links in the description to practice problems. I'd highly recommend you get this dialed before you move on. I know it's basic, but that's really the place to start for all of it to make sense. If you would please, if you have any questions at all, please comment below. Uh, I'm kind of doing this because of the requests and comments I got, like how do I get back into math? I haven't seen it for 10 years. And I'm hoping this series of videos will bring everybody back into it, build a solid foundation, and able to move forward. This might surprise some of you, but math is actually not hard. It's just that it's so cumulative, meaning it's so based on the previous section. So if you don't have a solid foundation, everything forward is really hard. It is no different than building a nice home. It has to start with a high quality foundation. If you got beautiful layout, beautiful concrete, beautiful foundation, everything will follow. If you got a crooked foundation that isn't really exact, no matter how good of a carpenter you are, that house cannot come out nice unless that foundation is solid and accurate with attention to detail. I'm currently building a house right now on my other channel, Topsaw, and I had a beautiful uh, foundation built by these highly skilled foundation guys, and I want you to do the same thing with your math education. I want a really solid foundation so that we can all progress together and be successful together, and you'll see how easy the math following that can be with that solid foundation. Thank you for watching.